For every 17 motorcycle crashes, there's a special one. One not caused by traffic, or weather, or animals, or the rider. The killer is your bike. Mechanical failure. While you sit fireside with a cup of mulled wine, mulling over the glories of rides past, your bike is festering and plotting ways to kill you. What can you do to save yourself? I mean, the Hurt Report's list of 900 accidents, is anybody underrepresented in vehicle failure? Yes. Those with dirt bike experience, those who know how to work on their machines, those who know how to spot mechanical monsters. Forget your grandmother's pre-ride checklist. Low oil and dead batteries are not killing anyone. Thailand did a study of 723 crashes. They found not a single incident caused by stuck throttle, faulty side stand, low pressures, worn tires, loose cargo. The real mechanical murderers are hiding. In 55 motorcycle failure crashes across France, Spain, Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands, the most common culprit was, of course, the sudden puncture. But unavoidable flats, well, they hide a second villain in their shadow. 11 sightings in 55. Brake failure is our concern, not fade. And pads won't die without screaming bloody murder first. Rotors never disappear below thickness overnight. In the same way, they won't glaze beyond the point of stopping, but it is a good idea to keep them fresh with a wipe of Scotch-Brite and some brake cleaner. Likewise, it's a good idea to rebuild the master cylinder at 50,000 clicks, but the seals and plungers in here rarely fail all at once. Ditto calipers. The piston seals are not exposed. They may leak slowly, if at all, but it's rare to see catastrophic failure. So, who's the killer? Hoses. Here, come check these out. They should be fresh and firm. Never bulbous, never dry, never pinched, never cracked. When brake failure is sudden, it's often caused by hydraulic fluid pushing through a leak rather than pushing your piston. So you have to check your hoses. Ah, but hoses belie another killer. What's hidden inside, what's revealed in your sight glass can also cause sudden failure. Dark, murky fluid is impregnated with water, dropping its boiling point. So you're riding hard and braking harder and hotter and hotter, and then poof, the fluid boils. And your lever squishes nothing but foam. Fresh fluid every two years, fresh hoses every four on most bikes. So, who's overdue? When a chain breaks, it goes full Texas massacre on your bike or leg, or as is more common, if you have a solid chain guard, it binds up. On the rear sprocket, you'll be struggling to control a sudden and unexpected skid. If it freezes up around the front sprocket, that's going to encourage your transmission to commit suicide. Alternately, the chain could be ejected backwards. Lucky for you. Unlucky for the final destination tryout driving behind. So check your chain link by link. Catching a damaged plate before it cracks would be extremely lucky, but we stand a decent chance of spotting a frozen link. Replace the chain if so, frozen links become broken links. Now I know this may sound a little uh, melodramatic. Also take extra care when examining the master. If you've got the clip kind, it better be traveling closed end first. Otherwise, you're riding a death trap where anything that rubs up against the chain will pop it open. Finally, check chain tension and alignment. Tension, because a too loose chain can hop off the sprocket, jam against the wheel, and cause a lockup even without braking. And alignment, because misaligned sprockets break chains. Take up the slack underneath, sight down the upper chain, and be afraid of any serpentine curve. Misaligned sprockets will cause the chain to snake. 
It is a lot easier to see snakes on a plane, so you might consider grabbing Motion Pro's perfectly straight reference tool. So, to keep this mechanical monster at bay, do a link by link, tension, and alignment check every 750 kilometers. And, of course, keep lubricating every... Welcome to the third mechanical failure that directly, statistically causes crashes. Grotesque, deformed, and otherwise flawed suspension. Poor geometry causes dynamic instability, which is how scientists say tank slappers. Now comes that awkward, very personal question. Have you set your sag? Really? Because uncalibrated geometry is the common cause of death wobble. If the front is riding high, it's stiff, so it'll hit a bump and deflect rather than absorb, leaving it to overcorrect and overcorrect and uh, tank slapper. Likewise, if the front is riding low, it's soft, a bump will actually throw the tire off the ground, leaving it to land offline, and we have a tank slapper all over again. Steering dampers are a band-aid, but bad geometry carves the wound. Properly setting sag is your best defense against things that go bump in the night. 30 seconds. You measure the complete travel, unloaded, then sit on the bike and measure the travel again as it settles from above and from below. You take those two numbers and average them to account for fork friction, subtract the result from your first unloaded measurement, and that's your sag. The holy book for your bike will tell you how far you fall short of perfection. Adjust the preload to pay penance, then do the back. I think he's losing his mind. Springs do fatigue over time, so SAG will always creep back into murderous territory. Fortunately, we swap our fork oil once per year. I see you. And that forces us to keep our SAG in check yearly as well. I still see. Another wobbly killer is wheel bearing failure. Attentive riders might notice the wheels feeling loose or drunk or clunking. But as is the case with fast moving parts, the degradation can also go from near unnoticeable to catastrophic in an instant. Fortunately, it's simple to check wheel bearings every time you change your tires. You just grab the wheel and try to make it move front to back, side to side, and try to cock it at an angle relative to the axle. I should not be able to make this tire do anything but spin cleanly round. That's what makes bearing failure so scary. I mean, imagine if this could move, it'd cock offline and then start grinding up against the brake assembly. So you have an incredibly dangerous combination of random changes in direction and random braking. It's a witch's potion for a wicked crash. Once you have the wheel off, because we check bearings while changing our tires, remember? And yes, inverting your foot peg is a great way to get a stable contact point for a jack stand. Just stick your finger in the bearing and check that it turns uniformly smooth. There should be no random resistance, no play in the bearing, no notches, no discoloration. Change the bearing if you discover any of those demons, even if you don't change it around 50,000 kilometers regardless. Maybe sooner, if you ride off-road, jump, race, cross rivers. I mean, why not? It's a cheap part and an absolute monster when it goes bad. And pro tip, before installation, stick the new bearing in the freezer. It shrinks the metal, makes it way easier to pop in. Headlamp failure is the top accident causing mechanical problem after punctures in Thailand. 23% of British motorcyclists ride with no headlight illuminated, yet 40% of crashers did not have their lights on. An Australian study found 25% of accident motorcycles were not in roadworthy condition, a common failing point being dead lights. So, probably not worth waiting for your head or tail light to die mid-ride. If you know yours are old and dim, replace them now, before spring comes and our riding brains cease to think of anything besides hitting the road. For reference, most of you on halogens are looking at thousand hour bulbs. HIDs get double that, and if you're a lucky bastard with LED lights, 15,000 hours means you're home free. And that rounds out 
our five most accident-causing mechanical monsters. I'll leave you with a spooky story. The Hurt Report makes mention of a certain station wagon struck in the side by an operating but riderless motorcycle. Not a single witness in that busy intersection saw the ghost rider. Upon investigation, no evidence of an operator, owner, or passenger could be found for that bike. Now the mystery of our headless horseman remains unsolved to this day, but it serves as a good reminder that your motorcycle is dangerous all by itself. There are ghosts in the machine to exercise this winter.